Hi, and welcome to the Frog Pond School of Design, where we talk about issues related to architecture that you just might not uh, hear about otherwise. I'm sure you're all familiar with the three classic Greek orders of architecture, the Doric, the Ionic, and the Corinthian. And you know how the Ionic is a little more ornate than the Doric and the Corinthian even more so. What's the Corinthian I want to talk to you about today? Have a shot here, a little bit better image of a Corinthian capital. And you can see how ornate it really is. And it appears to be overgrown with, with greenery. And there's a reason for that and a story behind it. It's actually a legend. Um, my idea of a legend is a story that if it wasn't true, it probably should have been, right? So, as the story goes, there was a young maiden who died, and her friends placed on her grave uh, items that had been important to her during her life, some of which were contained in a basket. And about a year or so later, an artisan came by the grave, saw the basket, and uh, was kind of taken with its appearance because by this time, it had been overgrown with acanthus leaves. Now acanthus is a plant that's fairly common in some Mediterranean areas and it had grown up inside the basket with the leaves coming out through the openings in the basket weave. So he went back to his studio and he carved his interpretation of this basket overgrown with the acanthus. And that carving became the inspiration for the, the Corinthian capital. Now, I could end the story there, but it gets even more interesting. I, know, I mentioned that this was a legend, and it may or may not be true, but it actually comes to us from a pretty reliable source. There's a book called De Architectura, which simply means on architecture, and it was written by a fellow named Vitruvius back in the first century BC. Um, he, uh, Vitruvius was an architect engineer type who um, worked for the Roman military. He designed um, aqueducts and other such structures. But his biggest contribution to architecture came later in life when he wrote this book. And it became a very famous book. It's recognized even today as the very first architectural textbook. But back then if you wrote a book it took a long time because you had to do it by hand and if somebody wanted a copy you had to do it all over again. So it didn't really become very readily available until uh, a millennium and a half later when Gutenberg invented the printing press and just not very long after that uh, the book was being read by a fellow named Leonardo da Vinci and da Vinci was reading about Vitruvius position on proportion both in nature and uh, in architecture and how they related to one another and Leonardo thought this has to apply also to the human body. So he did a drawing that was his interpretation of that relationship and we know that drawing today as the Vitruvian man. Isn't it fascinating how all these stories interrelate? Hey, thanks for joining us today at the Frog Pond School of Design. I look forward to seeing you hanging around the pond again real soon.